Breaking news. An apparent discussion took place in Seoul about using a legal loophole to send weapons to Ukraine. The South Korean government has repeatedly stated its official stance that it is willing to provide humanitarian aid and non lethal military goods to Ukraine, but will not provide lethal weapons. Reports from Saturday suggest that Seoul gave serious consideration to whether or not to provide lethal assistance with weapons to Ukraine after U.S. intelligence agencies intercepted South Korean government discussions about such support. U.S. media reports claim that the South Korean government has privately discussed the possibility of a deal in which the United States would provide artillery shells supplied by South Korea to the Ukrainian government. South Korea's government is worried that U.S. Vice President Joe Biden will put pressure on President Yoon Suk Yeol to provide weapons, according to reports from Seoul. The South Korean government has maintained its stance of not providing lethal weapon aid to the Ukrainian conflict since it began in February 2022. Prior to the Yoon administration taking office, in April 2022, Alexei Reznikov, the Ukrainian Minister of Defense, called his counterpart in South Korea to ask for assistance with anti-aircraft weapon systems for shooting down helicopters and aircraft. The defense minister of South Korea at the time, Su Wook, said no, saying that keeping troops on alert against North Korean threats was more important. In October, Yoon addressed comments made by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who warned that deteriorating relations between South Korea and Russia were possible if South Korea supplied weapons to Ukraine. Yoon stated, we have never provided lethal weapons or anything like that to Ukraine in solidarity with the international community. Despite this message, rumors persist that the South Korean government is secretly sending weapons to Ukraine. As a result of the assistance the United States is providing to Ukraine, the Ministry of National Defense announced in November that it was in talks with the United States regarding the exportation of 155mm shells. The government's policy has not changed, the ministry emphasized, and the country will continue to provide shells on the understanding that the U.S. is to be the end user. However, some experts have speculated that the export of shells to the United States was actually meant as a form of indirect aid, with the shells ultimately finding their way to Ukraine. A key official with the South Korean presidential office said, there has been no change in the government's basic position, of not providing lethal weapon assistance. In response to a Sunday New York Times report on circumstantial evidence that the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, eavesdropped on South Korea's and other allies' discussions on lethal weapons aid to Ukraine. Both Ukraine and NATO have kept up their requests for weapon aid from South Korea. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked South Korea for weapon aid at a press conference marking the one-year anniversary of the war in February. On April 5, after a meeting of foreign ministers attended by South Korea and others, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg made similar remarks in a press conference. Stoltenberg had previously requested direct lethal weapon assistance during a visit to South Korea in January. The fact that they are now delivering more and producing more to replenish the stocks on NATO allies allows NATO members to continue to deliver to Ukraine, he said. Non-lethal military equipment, including gas masks, bulletproof vests, tents, blankets, combat rations, and medications, were donated to Ukraine by South Korea last year. Not included were any types of ammunition, firearms, or missiles that could be used in direct conflict with Russia. This year, Seoul decided to increase its aid to Ukraine by US$130 million. United States dollars most of it going toward humanitarian causes with an emphasis on rebuilding for the benefit of the Ukrainian people. Ambulances, medical supplies, and infrastructure construction are all part of the picture, as are efforts to remove mines and restore electricity.